All right, Pretty now good. that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the juicy stuffs. Um, I got a web shop now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first teeny tiny step to uh, independence. Uh, a few years up on the road, probably. Yeah. So, what can you buy in this shop of yours? Um, you can buy fancy wooden things. Uh, I haven't decided <laughs> <Teak>? yet. Uh, <laughs> Is the shop open? Well, yes and no. Um, of course, I had uh, this uh, thing in Christmas. I was just um, looking into the web pages and the tools, and of course, it has uh, the web shop option. And I have been thinking about it uh, for quite a while, and now I realize that you can add up to three products before you have to upgrade your subscription and uh, go the full uh, e-commerce uh, route or whatever they call it. So I just started fiddling around with it. So I took some uh, some pictures uh, of the, the wall clock and the desk clock and, of course, the candlelight holder because they are kind of similar in style. Uh, and I just uploaded that to see how things work. And then, of course... You have to have a payment solution, so you need to have a user account uh, somewhere, and then you have to have a business PayPal account. So it's basically research for what you need to actually run a shop uh, without having a plan of what are we going to sell, when and where. So I'm just playing around with the tool, basically. But as a result of that, <laughs> I now have a live web shop. And if someone goes in and, ooh, I would like to buy that, I have a problem because I'm not set up for making them for sale <laughs> yet. Um, so that what, again, what's of on, course. What's on Sorry? sale? The deck, the deck hand? Is that on sale yet? Yeah, the, the navigator, <laughs> the deck hand, and the, the lighthouse, which I call the... The candlelight holder. So I'm, I'm keeping to the maritime, maritime theme in the naming and the description process. <laughs> the deck hand, it, I don't it's... know why, it makes me giggle each time, every time I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you have a different relationship to hand than <laughs> we do. <laughs> All right, let's Seems move along. unlikely. <laughs> So what is the uh, deck hand, the navigator, and the lighthouse? What are they? Well, it, it started with, I, I made the wall hanging clock in oak. And of course, all the dials or digits or whatever you call it, they look like sails. So of course, I went with the navigator theme. And then I made a smaller desktop version. And then, of course... The first one being the navigator, of course, then you have the smaller, lower ranked deck hand. And then, of course, uh, then I established uh, the maritime theme. And then, of course, when I made the candlelight holder, I was thinking calling it the Star Lord. But, of course, <laughs> playing on the Marvel Universe didn't really feel it fitted into the entire thing. And then, ooh, a lighthouse. That's very maritime. And, of course... Uh, it is a candlelight holder, so a lighthouse is only fitting. Very good. And have you come up with pricing for the products and things? And if so, how did you come up for the pricing? I put it where I feel it should be. Uh, I'm probably certain that somebody would argue that this is too pricey, but I mean, it's it covers the material costs and a couple of hours of labor, but not enough per if this is not going to be made in batches and sold, if this is going to be like... I, You have the possibility of limiting how many items people can buy. So if someone goes and press buy, they can only buy one at a time because they, they will be custom made. Now, this is just me playing around with the tool because I'm not expecting anyone to go and, ah, I would like 20 of that one. Um, uh, but, um, yeah... If, you, if you're going to do something like that, you, you have to find a market that are willing to pay for something ex exclusive because yeah. if you're going the Etsy route and setting up a niche where you're just hammering out something in batches and so on, then you end up uh, not being a maker anymore. You're just uh, a factory for uh, your own a few limited products. Yeah. But are, if, they all, uh, are they all CNC products or do you do much? Deck handing on them yourself. 
No, it's uh, they can with improvements be basically hundred um, percent done on the CNC. So it it will be a press and play. Of course, you have the the assembly and minimal sanding of course if you do yeah i I found some router bits that makes for a really good surface uh, and even the the ball nose bit that does the surface on the star shaped uh, candlelight holder it's actually leaving a finish that you don't need to sand but of course the the milling time is then of course higher but yeah. Then again, if if you're not gonna make hundreds of them, it's all right. If it takes four hours instead of two and a half, it doesn't matter because you can do other things. You just have to train the kids to assemble them. Then, yeah, uh, that's the plan. <laughs> of course, we need uh, that's a win-win in uh, raising them. They they need to understand the value of money and how do you uh, what you do to make money so that you can buy the stuff that they want. So it's a win-win. <laughs> Of course, you got to cover of the uh, you got to cover the cost of the CNC as well. I mean, that's not a cheap machine to run. It's not it's not like anybody's being shortchanged because the machine's making the product, is it? No, one bit. <laughs> I haven't done that uh, calculation. How many <laughs> how many <laughs> uh, clocks do I have to sell to actually pay off the cost <laughs> I spent on it? But of course, uh, writing it off as a hobby, uh, it's yeah, a, it's a really nice solution when you're getting tools. <laughs> you, you can you can forget about the cost because this is uh, mental spending, well-being. Uh, yeah, mental well-being <laughs> in the workshop. So yeah, I think the, uh, the stuff we buy for fun is a lot more important than the stuff that we have to buy for work, isn't it? I, I begrudge yeah. buying a new piece of equipment for work, even though I need it. <laughs> and of <laughs> course, doing the maths on it, I I know. If one should go into uh, a business uh, of your own, of course, I, I know a baseline where, of course, I, I should have gone rogue in my 20s when you are free and have no responsibilities and you can uh, live off a loaf of bread for a week. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, crash on the couch at your parents. But when you are a grown up with responsibilities and you're actually. Uh, also in charge of other people's lives, <laughs> all literally. Uh, I I need uh, at least the baseline where I can chip in the same to the joint bank account every month to cover the costs and so on as I do today. So of course, I can cut down on whatever is on top of that because that is basically what I now use for my hobbies. So you can of course try to tune that into a business and then try to find the sweet spot where. You have reached a threshold where you can actually quit your day job and focus more time on uh, running a company, which is also time consuming. And of course, I'm just doing this for the research. Uh, I ended up last year with the company because uh, we decided we need to register the family name so nobody else uh, do anything about it because that was the, the start of the entire thing. A couple of persons registered a company in our name and we challenged that and won. Uh, so we just needed to register the name. So we have a company. So I just started playing around with that because you you need to make a, an account statement every year and so on, even though if you're not making any money, uh, you have to do all the paperwork. So I'm I'm getting free training in that sense. Uh, and then, of course, so now might play, well playing around. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, at some point you will be at that point where okay i I have a business on paper uh and i have to file all the tax reports uh, and so on and of course i know how a web shop works and it's now set up so it's basically to doing to be honest the hard bit because making the products is also fairly easy but that it's getting it out there finding someone who would actually like to buy it and growing a brand and so on that's the that's a big part that takes years usually before you make the break even point. And if you're doing that in parallel to having a full time job, it takes even longer time, but you need to do it because you have a family and a house to defend. So <laughs> it's funny that you say, um, you know, you've got, you, you should have done it when you were younger. I started my business up 14 years ago when we'd first moved into this house. So we had the mortgage. We'd not got our daughter then, but she was, she wasn't much far behind. It was the start of a recession. 
and it was winter, just the ideal time for starting a good gardening business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you, you had a few months of doing the administrative work and getting everything set up before <laughs> the, the work started pouring in. <laughs> I pretty much started out on um, four days, and then within two weeks, I was up to five days. And then a couple of weeks after that, I was up to about six days. <laughs> So sometimes you just got to get it, you know, you got to gamble and hope that the gamble pays off. Yeah. Yeah. And not, nothing focuses it more than having to do it. <laughs> yeah, that that's yeah. very true. I mean, if you if you need this to work and you have all the available hours to put in, then of course it raises the stakes. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've I thought that before that. because we have, I mean, people are, taking that plunge in other countries where they don't have a safety net that we have here in Scandinavia because, I mean, if everything goes shits and I'm registered as an unemployed uh, looking for work, uh, the the safety benefits from the government is is more than enough to cover all the expenses. So we are basically doing a trapeze work with the largest safety net you could ever have so i mean it's a if you don't take the plunge in norway it's a <laughs> it's a no-brainer basically <laughs> yeah yeah wow that sounds amazing of course that's well, uh then there's the pride kicking in because you don't want to be unemployed and living off uh the handouts from the state because that is basically taken from the taxes from other people so but then again, it's an incentive to keep out of that loop or finding a job. And of course, it's it's not a problem finding a new job if you fail in your venture, because of course, you can go back to do what you did before very often. So there you go, then. Crack on. Yeah, crack on. <laughs> so uh, I'll keep uh, keep adding uh, product descriptions. And of course, I'm uh, I'm heavily ripping off IKEA. And uh, of course, they sell wall. Uh, clocks. So I just went in. What kind of documentation do they put on uh, to their web page and descriptions and uh, disclaimers <laughs> and whatnot? So copy paste and just uh, yeah. we can leave that out and we could do Steve that a bit more funny. Yeah. Do you want to share a name for the website yet, Havard, or do you want to wait a little bit longer? Um, we can wait a little bit longer until uh, I feel it's. Uh, buffed and shiny enough to be presented and we should share a link because trying to pronounce it in uh <laughs> it's uh it's 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 still just linked to my uh, uh personal uh domain so at, at some point right. if you're gonna venture into actually having a web shop you should actually try and find a a more shop friendly name so to say yeah so now that Very could be, that could be that. A, that could be a challenge actually to find a good shop name because uh, yeah uh, you you could do the traditional uh, one person company where you just use your name and then it's uh, Havard's uh, Maker Corner but you could also go the other route and find something that's a bit catchy and uh, trying to lure people in so you could do I a think poll. Should, I think you should call it I said clock. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for this. Yeah, that's a, there's a yeah. lot of slogans you can uh, use as well. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, yeah. I could. Uh, no, I don't think I want mass produce those music boxes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can have the odd corner of uh, things. <laughs> like uh, you can put up a one off uh, YouTube projects because some of them are taking up more space than I actually have. So. Uh, I'm now moving around the um, the Christine car. I still want to keep it, but it's like I'm moving it every day. I'm in the workshop, and I I can't really bring it into the house. And it's the kids are not really old enough to play with it. I might put it in deep storage in the in the attic. And of course, uh, in Christmas when all the shops were uh, closed, I needed three identical switches, which I didn't have in my uh, assortment of switches so i actually 
I cannibalized it, so I took all the switches and used that <laughs> in the music box, so it's not even complete. So it's uh, isn't yeah. that great? Can't, can't you install it in the in the crawl space in the attic? So and for the switch, when you open the hatch, the lights come yeah. on when you stick up the head. <laughs> it's like you're in the driveway and it's coming right for you. <laughs> that, I think that it's would, hilarious. Sorry, that Karen. would be cool, and then. Um, we could hide it in the furthest part behind the chimney so you don't actually see it when you go into there because you seldom go all the way down the crawl space. But if the new owner at some point does that and he looks around the corner and then there's a Christine car there just uh, flashing on the lights, it's going to scare the crap out of that. That's even better than uh, putting a, like a fake skeleton inside the wall before you do uh, yeah. <laughs> the remodel. Just put a motion sensor on it so yeah. it will light up if someone com- comes close. <laughs> and of course, instead of battery, it needs to have a power adapter and uh, hooked up to the mains, but uh, that's easy fix. <laughs> I think it's hilarious that it's the car that's getting in your way in your workshop. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, mean, not the giant fucking organ. (laughs) (laughs) That being said, if I if I got the organ out, uh, there might be some room for the car. Um, Yeah. (laughs) But then again, it's like Fix It Finger says: it is having a car in your workshop is a challenge. So. uh, (laughs) <laughs> but I have been thinking about that. I need to do... I haven't really found the motivation to dissect the organ, but it needs to happen soon because I'm I'm not going to play it very much. We're not going to move it inside. Uh, so uh, I need to use it for what I got it for and then get rid of it again. And of course, that would be a nice... Uh, thing to ask the CMOs. I mean, I I do think I can get to it get to its internals and figure out uh, how I can implement that in the hell quarter without taking it so much apart that it doesn't work. So I have some images for a video. I, I don't know what the top is, is going to be, but I, uh, I'm thinking about the Great Balls of Fire by Jerry Lee Lewis where he's uh, setting his uh, <laughs> piano on fire while playing and that would certainly be a possibility here before you put it on the trailer and drive it to the dumps. I think you should be playing it when it's on the trailer as well. With your wife driving the car and you're sitting on it like a Monty Python sketch. <laughs> <laughs> and it's on fire at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Yeah. The, the only thing I'm struggling with mm. is, of course, it is it is actually in mint condition, so I, I could take the back plate off and most likely I could get all the information I need from just looking at it. I, I could stitch it back up again and I could actually try to give it away, but there is a reason why they are a, a 40, 50 plus organs being given away within a 50 mile radius from our house. So. Uh, I'm going to get stuck with it if I'm going to try to give it away. So uh, it's 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 going to it's going to be a sad day when I if I drive it to the tip because it is perfectly in working order and actually is one of the those who looks better. So uh, but then again, you have to break some eggs, so yeah, smash it. Yeah. <laughs> Is it is it any good wood or is it just veneer or No, that's the thing. It's it's crappy wood and veneer. There I know there are, there are some, I think they're called reed valves on the inside. So there are probably some hardwood on the inside because it needs to be stable. Um, or maybe not. But I think this was pre-plywood era. So I, there there is probably some hardwood in there. But then there's going to be drilled a lot of hole and holes and mounted a lot of stuff to it. So I don't think it's salvageable for anything useful. So, KJ, the other day you said you were editing a video. What are you working on? Don't think about it. Just say it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm actually working on, on a lot of things because uh, this Christmas vacation, uh, for those who has not, I've, I've been on vacation since before Christmas, and my first day at work was today when we recorded this. So I had more than two weeks off, uh, and that time has mostly been spent on... Uh, 
getting shit done that's been uh, taking up space both in the workshop and in my head for over a year. So uh, the, I finished uh, two projects uh, during this time, and, uh, and I'm editing a third one that's been wow. done since, uh, uh, I think it was April of last year. No? Yeah, April last year. Uh, and I started that back in August of 2020. Wow, <laughs> what was it? So it's been it's been uh, laying around for a while. It's uh it's a dice game. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be any good, but it's gonna be something at least. Um, and I need to get it done and get it out on the interwebs and out of my head and stop <laughs> worrying about it. <laughs> Having it on the list that oh yeah, I'm gonna finish this as well. So yeah. Um, so it's uh, so I have a lot of things lined up. So now I have to plan out where to uh, to uh, put the knife along uh, in this release schedule as well. So that's, <laughs> it feels nice to start a year with, I mean, more or less three complete projects. Yeah, so I think I'm. Okay, I, uh, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna pass the one uh, one build a month. Uh, schedule that, I, that I'm planning to uphold. I actually managed it last year uh, as well, so that felt pretty nice. That's pretty impressive. I mean, not for Havard, who managed to get a video, video out pretty much every week. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> he's not normal. That's, that's, <laughs> that's got to change, but of course I did. I'm, I made a, another Gingerbread House video this year, and I really just dead middle of the recording i just lost all motivation it was it was cold and then of course i fucked up so i had to redo it after it's gone dark and of course the the hot plate was a bit on the smaller side so it took forever and uh when i got into the edit it was a lot of snow a lot of white and of course uh the recordings weren't really as good, so it was not pleasant doing the edit. So I just uh, put a video up on Patreon um, and said, well, I'm not sure this will, of course, make it onto YouTube. But then I, I slept on it for a few nights, as uh, you proposed, KJ, and then I just cut it down from 18 to a three and a half minute video. <laughs> I just removed all the talking and just uh, switched around on the music. And I just, oh, I uploaded it because I then, I've, past the threshold it's the first video of the new year so it's it's a yeah. crappy one but it's at least it's done and it's out of my way it's and not I don't... crap yeah it's a nice it's nice little video it felt like a crude but efficient video uh <laughs> no, but yeah, i think it's i think this was a great first year rocket fuel gingerbread house it's a, it's a low low i mean it's it was just at the bare minimum more or less it was a really simple you made the batter you put it in a form it looks good. You light it on fire. It went up in flames. <laughs> nice and simple. It's n n next year you can add a bit to it. Next year you can add a bit to it. So you're starting on a nice ground level. Yeah, and that that's maybe one of the reasons I lost motivation because we have done this a few years, and of course, um, going from doing this uh, with. Uh, the family and until the children are old enough that they can actually participate in in a safe manner uh, i was standing there outside in the cold and okay i'm doing this alone after the bedtime so the only joy i had was when i brought the kids out and we had visitors over so we just uh, lit it up and they were just like yay do it again and it's like no, it's gone now. I can't do it again. So we have to spend uh, 40 plus hours to set up a new one. And that's not happening. Um, but there hasn't been a progress from the video last year where I put more effort into decorating and so on. So I need to to find a, a way to evolve it. Of course, I have been thinking about if I do a, a Moomin style house. Because that has mm -hmm. a rocket shape, could I also make it have a lift off? But then again, it's it's borderline doing this now in the in a densely populated area. And if I'm building it actually as a rocket that's taking off, then I should actually relocate. 
Yeah. That's some really tricky part as well, building famous houses. That can get you into some real trouble. <laughs> I mean, just I know some people who would be really not like you setting the Moomin house on fire, uh, for instance. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it should <laughs> have just that uh, general <laughs> form. Uh, you should, of course, it, it would be a, a clickbaity move to put the, the Moomin into the title, but they are also very protective of their design and pro intellectual yes. property rights. So it's uh, <laughs> you might not want to go there. Um, but yeah, I, I, but I did, look, I did look in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. White House down. Well, that will. <laughs> That would uh, nail the last uh, nail in the coffin for the lists that I'm on. That's probably the last list I need to be put on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe I should do the Houses of Parliament for Bonfire Night. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh... <laughs> I think that would work. Would they care though? I mean, I, I, I think no, they're I'm pretty relaxed. Yeah, support. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fifty-fifty split. I would say. Yeah, yeah. I do it for real next time. <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing is do you, do you get a mold for that because I was looking into do you get like a, a batter mold for the, the moment house or something but um, the one I found was the closest one to uh, to a Christmas house at least so um, I mean you should be I, able to 3D print one yeah but, but I'm thinking like if you got if, a 3D printer yeah <laughs> <laughs> hmm. you should probably just buy one yeah, should definitely. Uh, and um, a laser, because because I'm thinking the the White House cake form uh, mold that that is something. I'm I'm sure if you're googling that, you will get a million variants. Uh, yeah, probably uh, from the patriotic uh, baking community of the United States. It's probably just up there with the NRA. Um, um, but yeah, the House of Parliament. I'm a bit unsure. And yeah, then again, it's a route of getting a laser. Of course, I I did. I've gone to that point where I've actually put a laser in the shopping cart and playing around with just 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 press purchase and get it over with. And then I'm still on the fence on how much I'm going to use it. And then of course uh, the X tool launched uh, the new laser, and it's there's a company here in Norway that sells them and. But they're out of stock, so I put me on the list of being notified when they get it in again. But then it's the <laughs> business of the thicknesser, and that would probably get more use time, or maybe not. But then I should have a full size bandsaw as well because I need the resaw capability. And those are the three kind of substantial purchases on my budget, and I can't get all three yeah. of them. And of course, uh, what is it that I'm going to use the most? So I'm, I'm still doing a balancing act there. Well, the laser definitely gets more use than my planar thickness are in my workshop. Yeah, and I was thinking also, if you're setting up a web shop, I did the... I'm still on the fence about the... the should, should I even mention the name? Uh, the, the franchise uh, going on into space uh, where I made the characters uh, Christmas uh, decorations. Uh, Darth Santa <laughs> and the uh, Christmas Star and what was it? Uh, Christmas Trooper. Um, <laughs> I still think I could, as long as I don't use the names as references and it's an artistic rendering of that design, which actually is not per definition owned by disney of course uh, when i asked them and got a reply from one of their lawyers he was really giving a very woolly answer trying to talk around what i actually asked about and i've kind of come to the conclusion that that is because they can't really say no to me because yeah. it's not it's not a copy and they don't have all the rights to that so as long as i don't use the names and of course i think within that segment you could sell something on a web shop or etsy or whatever and then a laser would really knock those out at uh, a high speed so um you definitely need the co2 laser for that if you're gonna do fast lasering fast laser cutting that is yeah hmm. and then there's the question of uh, space in the workshop as well yeah but we cover, space, covered uh... that because the laser i can 
at least the new one now from Axe Tool, that's a diode laser, but it actually have the full enclosure with uh, the fan outlet and that I can have here in the office. I have room mm-hmm. in the corner and we actually have outlet on the wall so I could hook it up to blow the fumes out and it's relatively quiet so I could run it still if people are sleeping. So uh, I don't have to waste workshop space on the laser. I can just bring it inside. So that that's uh, that's some points on the laser what? compared to the thickness planer thing. So what's the big bulky thing we now have uh, in our office slash uh, downstairs living room? Oh, that's uh, just uh, that's a fancy <laughs> coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a new printer. Yeah. <laughs> Would you guys like the latest camera update? Do you remember that cheap yes, camera please. I bought? Yes, come yeah. on. Yeah. It is. Okay. So you buy a cheap camera. Yep. You then need to buy lights to go with that cheap camera. That adds to the cost of the cheap camera. You yeah, then... so then you need some cheap lights, yeah? Go yeah, on. Yeah, so I've got some cheap <laughs> lights, yeah. Cheap lights are good. I quite like the cheap lights. But then you find that the microphone that came with the camera, which looked very comprehensive, is absolute shite so then <laughs> you need to buy a microphone <laughs> so all of a sudden the cheap camera's not looking quite so cheap <laughs> <laughs> i did uh, i did the same thing um i bought um upgraded uh well it's not a boom mic but it's the one you put on the camera and it was an improvement, but I ended up uh, getting the the wireless microphone, and that's the thing I'm now using. So, if you are, or did you just buy a microphone? Or no, I've not got one yet. No, then I would really think about upping to the wireless system because it really yeah. helps uh, not having the the audio quality. If you're doing voiceover while you're talking, it's it's like night and day. Yeah. Did you go for the Rode microphone? Yeah, and it's yeah. a it's a good system, good audio quality, and the the price is I I would say it's reasonable for what they actually provide with that system. And does the um, receiver just plug straight into the camera? Yeah, yeah, uh, it was, to a, uh, like a three and a half mil jack. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's why I went for it, and I actually had that in mind when I bought the camera that I need that microphone input with the the standard jack plug, so I don't need anything fancy. And yeah. of course, the battery capacity on those are really good. Um, of course, I I too bought cheap lights, and they are good, uh, at least for a close up and so on. But the the size and the quality really, well, I know where they saved money, and that was on battery capacity. So they are spending more mm-hmm. times charging than actually me filming. So um, I think the what I run out of juice most on is actually the lights. So the the camera can run for an entire day shooting lots of videos mm-hmm. and the microphone will last for days. Um, yeah. But those cheap ass lights, they are, uh, I have two of them and at least one is constantly on charge. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my lights don't have any battery capacity at all, but I've got loads of outlets in my workshop and that's where I film. So it's yeah, not that's issue, uh, really. Yeah. I don't have that possibility on my lights, but they do work off the USB charge port. So I can, of yeah. course, uh, I have a like a 12 volt uh, battery conversion thing that I can use with my Bosch batteries. So I can have that on the tripod and hook it up to the lights. But I really don't like cables hooked up to my tripod. Uh, of course, uh, if you have the battery tape to the tripod, but still, there's a lot of wires to <laughs> mess around with. So. I was I was thinking that would be the first thing I'd build if I had a um, a three D printer would be a little um, a power bank battery holder for the uh, tripod. That would yeah. be one of the first things I print. <laughs> yeah. That would be a really useful addition. <laughs> yeah, actually, that when you mentioned that, it's uh, you'll have a couple of orders from uh, other side of the Atlantic here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think North, I was kind North of hoping. Sea, yeah. I think I was kind of hoping you'd buy one first so I could order one from you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, feel free to chip in. (laughs) Hey, some of us have got a microphone to buy here. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I'm also looking into getting a microphone, but uh, as I'm using a phone to 
uh, to record that doesn't have a three and a half mil outlet. I have to find some other thing. So that, yeah, that's actually I why get. I had before I got my camera. I used my phone, and I have a, a mount for that uh, on the tripod, uh, and that mount has, of course, the uh, the shoehorn fastenings for the lights and so on. And I bought. That's the reason why I got the Sony because they still have the three and a half millimeter jack port with the microphone. But of course, it's it's a pain in the ass sort of hooking that up and then putting that into the frame to do filming, and then you need it to answer a text message or something, and then uh, so yeah, <laughs> moving from a phone to a separate camera was a relief in that way. Does your phone not have the headphone sockets on then, KJ? Nope. No, it's oh, okay. the 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 Google Five I'm using for filming because it has pretty awesome optics, and yeah. that does not have any other than the USB C. Uh, so okay. I'm thinking about. I think I'm gonna get a a mic to plug into that to get a little bit better audio and some direction as well to it. So they don't so, have an but adapter. I need to, I think it's some adapter, but I don't want an adapter on an adapter, and and I'm I'm not planning on doing that much voice over from a distance either. I think uh, over the talking to the camera at a distance, I'm more of a <laughs> talking to the camera up close and personal instead. Yeah, so you, you, say, they, uh... you say that now, but. <laughs> <laughs> You saw the reel I did of the bloopers of me trying to talk to camera the other yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that that was me doing it on the phone because I'd given up on the actual video camera and I'd actually done about five takes in each microphone setting first to try and get that correct. And that's why I was looking so fed up by the time I got to the phone version. I actually did a decent take third one in. But then realised the audio was absolute shite. Mm-hmm. So bloody yeah, annoying. You looked a bit knackered. I was knackered. <laughs> oh, we had a long day at work. No, this was yeah. the eleventh yeah, no, time recording this. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I have. I have a lot of bloopers, but when you've done the edit and then of course are you going to then sift through that raw material <laughs> again of course you can't do it when you're blocking up the the pieces that you want to use like you can okay this is a blooper is uh, so you put that to the end but like doing that four or five minute edit at the end with bloopers again is like uh... <laughs> oh i yeah. hate bloopers parts of, uh, of videos it's i mean you should bloopers are they should be put up as a, a reel or a short or whatever, as a commercial for the thing, not not a part of the video, I think. If it's not really, 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 really good, but they seldom are. Yeah. It wasn't a, a big effort to um, edit that little blooper reel, having just stitched together two pre-edited videos. So. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that big a deal. <laughs> yeah, and when you're on the topic of short show, uh, hmm, I think Maybe I'll do that tonight. See if I can stitch the the gingerbread house video into a, a short, which I can post on uh, yeah, you should. social media. That should do good on TikTok. I mean, uh, fire and <laughs> short and uh, no talking and uh, a lot of action. So yeah, yeah. put some kunga. Yeah. Do you ever consider timings when you put a short out? No, I just uh, no. make sure it's below the the time frame of the short, and that's it. <laughs> sorry, I meant, <laughs> sorry, I meant, I meant times when you release it. <laughs> yeah, I understood, but I, I can't uh, okay. help myself. <laughs> uh, I I think I did that on the. That's the first time I did that on the the music box video. I actually went into the research tab to see when most of the subscribers. Uh, are actually online and watching and it turns out it's that the majority is of course uh, uh either in the uk or the states so that's re- right before bedtime here and that is really good for me because i'm usually done with the editing uh yeah. doing voiceover and uh, everything like right up until midnight on the last day um 
of course i was thinking okay maybe i should wait until the next day i had a couple of premieres set up for the next day but i should really just when i'm done with it publish and be gone that's the best uh... <laughs> publish and go to sleep that's pretty nice actually yeah but it, it... publish a video and go to sleep are you going to keep an eye on the stats <laughs> yeah and then you wake you up to the look dis- at the stats <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then then you get so a few hours before you can wake up to the disappointment <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that being <laughs> said i would recommend trying the um, like the the instant premiere and then of course uh, be available in the chat I, I think i have averaged one or two persons actually interacting but it's nice uh, having your video launch and you are available and actually chatting too because the people who are then tuning in to when it's actually released they are the people who are interested and are more engaged so it's uh, some nice conversations going in the chat i hate premieres <laughs> because then you can't you, you can't save them to watch later you have to go in and actually start the file and then you have to save it to watch later because i don't have time to sit yeah, around but... with a premiere i think it's but a much shorter again, list Discovering what you actually did like, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we'd established that. Butter. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yes. <laughs> On a stick. Butter in my mouth. <laughs> no, I, I just got an idea for a project uh, involving a butter uh, and a stick. <laughs> and then I don't think it's appropriate hmm. to uh, say anymore. I just... Uh, I'm, I'm going to try and unthink that and uh, never think of it again. <laughs> <laughs> when I first started doing shorts, I had quite a good run on doing one every week. And I had, I, I, I accidentally put one out on a um, a Friday lunchtime and that did pretty well. And then I, I thought, well, that did pretty well at that time. So I'll do it every time, the same time every week. And that worked out pretty well for that run that I had actually producing content for the same time. So, um, yeah, I've always been a bit more careful when I release a short. I mean, if you were doing it full time, of course, I could probably, as a result of that, uh, needing to have a schedule, then you can actually schedule for releases. But I can't do that now. I I, I don't know what the next video is going to be. And I'm sure as hell not certain of when it's going to be ready. And then, when it's ready, <laughs> I just want to publish it and move along. So uh, if yeah. I have a video ready, and then, of course, I spend some time on the thumbnail. And when that's ready, I just want to upload it no matter what time of day or night or whatever. And just yeah, get it over <laughs> with. It's actually pretty hard once you've edited a video and then sit on it for about four days. Yeah. Just, come on, is it going to do well? Is it going to do well? <laughs> that's, so that's going to be a pain on the knife along, actually having a finished video and waiting to uh, publish it. Yeah, is it bothering you now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did it turn out? Are you happy with it? Ah, <laughs> uh, no, it's I. I haven't actually made anything, but uh, I know the design. So I think the the making is gonna. It's going to be, uh, if I get a few hours uh, one day in the workshop, I think I'll have the rough cut ready. And then uh, if I'm happy with the first try, it's uh, sanding and preparations. And yeah. So I'll see. That's a yeah. question. Will you be happy with it if you're done, like, after a week and sitting there staring at it? Is this good enough? Is this good enough? Should I do it again? Should I do it again? Are you kidding? You can just sit there sanding the handle for three weeks making a long form video dot. <laughs> <laughs> and just it's mumbling a... to himself. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of uh yeah, I'm gonna make a three and a half hour yeah. ASMR sanding video. Just uh close up sitting there stroking the handle of a knife inappropriately with some sandpaper. <laughs> I mean I mean the blade needs some sanding as well. Don't forget that. So and I don't <laughs> think we get to see that often. It's always a montage and you see but oh I've been sanding for seven hours. Yeah Show that's uh Are you guys gonna lay uh, maybe 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 it's now that I'm gonna actually get one of those uh, sharpening stone sets for actually uh proper sharpening knives you guys gonna lazy your blades as well 
No, we thought we you were going to do it. You're the one with the laser. So uh... I'm an electrical engineer. Of course, I'm with Electro Edge. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> you could, um, what was it? What was it? Um, well, what's the name? What's the most famous female YouTuber that we know at the moment? Maker. Laura Camp. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she did the copper thing, didn't she, with the tampon? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's you correct, could do yeah. that, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've got any spare tampons about, go for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're good supply. Maybe we um, could put, use a different tactic and use our beards. No, <laughs> <laughs> stroking the blade. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> no. Yeah, I've done some electro etching. No, no, I'm not. No. <laughs> what did you electro etch? Uh, the uh, Apollo Eleven uh, space uh, capsule bowl I made made for Smog Dog uh, <laughs> a couple of years ago. Uh, so, as a full full to tools treasure trade. Is that something you'd never thought you'd hear yourself say? <laughs> yeah say that quickly 10 times in a row <laughs> uh, I'd rather not uh, but that what being kind said of dog, what kind of dog was it <laughs> oh. but I a think smug early, one <laughs> early on I, I thought about not cheating but making it easy for myself because I know the, the blade shape I would like to go for and of course, you could get a knife um, or, or a kit. Uh, but of course, it came pre-laser engraved. And I don't, I don't like engraving on the sides of my knife. Uh, that's, uh, that's a really turn off. Not that I... Uh, just trying to put me off, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I I'm going to go with some... It needs yeah. to be In- Intricately engraved. Uh, just because yeah. you haven't got a laser... <laughs> Now I've got a laser. It's my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> yes, dude. I have a laser. You don't on the side of the blade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you could. Uh, could you use your laser to imitate some <laughs> turns? Uh, Probably. Yeah. Uh, maybe. <laughs> oh, did <Not> we? Uh, <laughs> did we hit? Too close to home there, Glenn. <laughs> a little bit. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. We should end the recording now. Yeah, so right. if we end it here, I the can... Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> and, and now I'll head off and send Erasmus Lewin a message. And whatever Glenn tells you, it needs to take more than three weeks before you deliver. <laughs> Say it's lost in the <laughs> mail or something. <laughs>